wherever you are in the world, chances are you're sitting on water. Drill down deep enough and you'll find it. Beneath the Earth's surface, groundwater aquifers are nature's wonderful way of storing water. Indeed, collectively they constitute the largest amount of liquid fresh water on Earth. They are an important source of drinking water and they also offer a potential solution to increasing global problems of water scarcity. Groundwater is used by farmers the world over. In more developed arid countries such as Spain and the southern US, groundwater underpins thriving high value farming. Elsewhere the situation varies. Asia and Africa for instance are strikingly different. In Asia groundwater is highly exploited particularly in India and China. In India alone a million new tube wells are sunk every year. In Africa it is a greatly underexploited resource. To get at it you need pumps, wells, a supply of energy and know-how, things that many African farmers lack. Globally about 1,000 cubic kilometres of groundwater is withdrawn every year, enough to cover the entire island of Cyprus with a metre of water. Half or more of this is taken by smallholder farmers. In India, 600 million people directly benefit from groundwater supported agriculture. Many researchers have demonstrated that this approach is often more productive and equitable than centrally run irrigation schemes. But there's a catch. Take too much groundwater and the consequences can be disastrous. You can't see water underground of course, so the temptation to take as much of it as you want is high. It is an invisible commons which when over exploited can lead to an all too visible tragedy. A classic example is Mexico City. So much groundwater was withdrawn from the earth below the metropolis that buildings began to sink and crack. Other common problems are increased salinity and heavy metal contamination as sources are depleted. The increase in groundwater extraction is quite startling. In 1969 India withdrew 25 square kilometres of water. By 2010, fueled by cheap new pumps and subsidised electricity, that figure had risen tenfold. It's demand driven. If you have your own pump, all you have to do is sink a well. Then you can get as much water as you want, whenever you want. In the words of one researcher, groundwater irrigation has evolved into a colossal anarchy. But with good science, groundwater can be effectively and sustainably managed. If we can work out how long it takes for an aquifer to recharge, we can work out the sustainable yield with ease and design long-term strategies to maintain water levels for long-term use. So what is sustainable yield? The first thing to bear in mind is that water flows in flow in aquifers can be incredibly slow. In the case of the Great Artesian Basin in Australia, it can take hundreds of thousands of years for water to pass from one side to another. Flows in other systems can be much faster, but establishing the speed of flow is the first step towards sustainable management. But on its own, better flow management is not enough. We need innovative thinking, improved governance and well-drafted regulation if we are to keep groundwater flowing sustainably. It will be challenging. Many groundwater sources come under the jurisdiction of multiple authorities and farmers using groundwater have been fiercely resistant to curbs on their access. India offers compelling lessons both in how damaging overexploitation can be and how, despite perverse incentives and subsidies, the situation can be brought under control. In Gujarat, for instance, EMI scientists were asked to investigate solutions to low groundwater levels. In the late 1990s, the state's chief minister faced a situation of depleted aquifers and a nearly bankrupt electricity board. Powerful agricultural lobbies were resistant to metered electricity tariffs that would rein in soaring farm power subsidies. Donors and power experts all wanted the state government to meter all tube wells and charge farmers a consumption-linked tariff. But strong farmer lobbies opposed this. To solve the problem, the researchers recommended power rationing according to a strict time schedule and with a supply of uninterrupted full voltage to overcome farmer resistance. It wasn't a perfect solution, but given the politics, it could be made to work. Under a scheme called Jayotigram Johanna, Lighted Village, 
260 million US dollars was invested in separating electricity feeder lines for agricultural and non-agricultural users to make farm power rationing effective and tamper-proof. By providing a reliable full voltage power supply, the Jyoti Gramyana made it possible for farmers to keep to their irrigation schedules, conserve water, save on pump maintenance costs and use labour more efficiently. The results were spectacular. In the next five years, Gujarat recorded nearly a 10% growth in agricultural profitability, the highest in all of India. The message is quite clear. Well-managed groundwater resources greatly benefit farmers and consumers. India has now signalled its intent to roll this program out in a widespread manner. In Africa, we have a fantastic opportunity to develop groundwater as a new and sustainable resource. Shallow wells can be replaced with simple pump bores. Lessons learned in Asia can help African policy makers to avoid past mistakes and implement robust and equitable management practices. We are getting better and better at identifying potential problems in groundwater management and finding smart solutions. For instance, combining surface and groundwater together, so-called conjunctive use, has been used to great effect in Australia's Murray-Darling Basin to tackle problems of salinity. Artificial recharge, capturing urban runoff and treated sewage and pumping it into groundwater has been a great success in California's Orange County. Aquifers can even treat sewage if water is extracted far enough away from where it is pumped in. Groundwater supplies aren't fixed. Their availability responds to changes in land use and climate. But as we face an increasing global population and more climate variability, it will be a critical resource in helping us respond to new food security challenges. The Australian Groundwater School in Adelaide says it all. Groundwater will be the enduring gauge of this generation's intelligence in water and land management. This is Colin Chartres at the International Water Management Institute.